In this video, I will guide you through a problem in Smith's Organic Chemistry. I'm Stoddard, founder of Study Chem, the place for students to turn for higher grades in OCHEM. Let's get started. Think about the uh, use of crown ethers in substitution reactions. Which mechanism is favored by the use of crown ethers in nonpolar solvents, SM1 or SN2? The textbook does a great job explaining how crown ethers works. It mentions that the solvent conditions enhance the nucleophilicity. The crown ether makes the nucleophile more nucleophilic, extremely nucleophilic, more nucleophilic. They explain it many different ways, but they don't ever say if it favors SM1 or SN2. Let me give you um, a brief recap here of the substitution reactions we have. Um, this is a primary alkyl halide. It's a great substrate for um, various nucleophiles. And we'll go ahead and just write 18 crown 6 down here. Um, that, that ether actually is better with potassium, so let's go ahead and write potassium cyanide. Um, and what you get is the substituted um, reaction product, right? And bromide is, is the leaving group here. So the nucleophile comes in and replaces the uh, halogen. So how does it work? We have cyanide, which is a nucleophile, and it attacks directly, kicks off the leaving group, and gives you the product. The rate is proportional to both the concentration of cyanide, the nucleophile, or the substrate. Okay. How about SN1? This is SN2 right, because it involves two things. Now, if we take a look at a tertiary alkyl halide, recall that if we treat this with something that is a source of a nucleophile, let's use potassium cyanide, and let's just go ahead and add 18 crown 6 down below, because um, we don't know yet which, which one is more favored. So let's go ahead and draw the product here. Um, of course, we just substitute the bromine for a nitrile or a cyano group here. Um, this reaction is SN1. As you recall, the cyanide can't get in here to the tertiary reaction center due to steric hindrance and kick off the bromide. So the reaction mechanism instead goes by heterolysis or breaking of the carbon bromine bond to give you a tertiary carbocation. And this is the uh, rate limiting step or the slow step. And then in the next step, we have cyanide that comes in and uh, gives you the final product here. The reaction rate is proportional only to the concentration of the alkyl halide or the substrate, not the concentration of cyanide. Okay, The slow step is the step that limits the overall rate. So if this carbon bromine bond were to break, it doesn't matter how good of a nucleophile this is, really good or really bad, the carbon bromine bond is still going to break at a certain rate that's dictated by how good is this leaving group, how stable is the carbocation. All right. Whereas over here, we have the rate is proportional to the nucleophilicity or how good your nucleophile is. So the better the nucleophile, the faster this reaction is going to occur. Crown ethers make the nucleophiles even better. All right, so the answer is SN2 because cyanide is involved in the rate limiting step, so it's going to make the overall reaction faster if the nucleophile is even better. Down here, it's not SN1 because the nucleophile is not involved in the rate limiting step. It doesn't matter how good your nucleophile is, the reaction is just going to be as slow as it wants to be because. Um, of the limitations of uh, making that carbocation and how, how good of a reaction this step is. Okay, The, the, the fast step here um, doesn't enter into the overall uh, kinetic uh, rate expression. Thank you for watching.